Welcome to Birth Explained. How can we reduce the fear of birth by explaining the mechanism by which birth becomes possible? So the anatomy, firstly, we have the bony pelvis. As you can actually see, there is a fairly substantial opening in the bony pelvis to allow ba baby out of mummy's tummy. But then the question arises, how come nothing else falls out of mummy's tummy before the baby is born? Well, because there is not just skin, but muscle spanning from front to back. Here we have um, pelvic floor anatomy 3D tutorial, which you'll find on YouTube. And it shows that same opening. except from the pubic symphysis at the front, spanning the opening to the back of the coccyx sacrum, is this floor of muscle called the pelvic floor. And underneath, if we have a look now, a view underneath, you can see at the front here, the pubic symphysis, symphysis meaning junction between right and left. We have a reinforcing shelf, a triangular reinforcing shelf through which the urethra that passes urine and the birth canal pass and that's the opening for the large bowel so we have a pelvic floor of muscle and a muscular reinforcing shelf the urogenital diaphragm and these span from the pubic symphysis at the front to the back the sacrum and coccyx effectively forming a hammock as you can see there and that stops the intestine falling out but then comes the question how is it possible that this two centimeter opening the birth canal opening actually can allow a baby whose diameter at the back of baby's head is 10 centimeters diameter well because the fibrous coats of this muscle becomes gradually stretched during the birth so that that two centimeter opening widens to 10 centimeters the diameter in opening in the bony pelvis and we can actually introduce birth to four and five year olds during the nativity so they don't simply rock baby jesus but with their palms of their hands can actually mimic birth so this is the hammock from front to back the opening here is the opening for the large bowel. The spine is here. The birth canal is the bit at the front. So if we stretch its fibrous coat, then it no longer acts solely as a, a floor to the lower abdomen, a, a hammock, but it also acts as a trap door, allowing baby's head and body pass through and then it closes back so during the nativity when the word birth is mentioned the four and five year old can actually mimic birth where the hammock the functioning of the pelvic floor from hammock becomes a trap door and then reverts back once baby has passed through that opening into a hammock supporting the intestines so some of that fear of birth becomes addressed early on in that child's life. Years ago, most children grew up on a farm and they saw birth in, uh, uh, in spring, lambing. The ewe giving birth to the lamb, the cow giving birth to her calf and the foal, foal being born by the mare. We've missed all this out as children growing up in towns and cities. So what else can we explain to a child? What is miraculously happening inside mummy's tummy? The midwife will, if the child, four and five year old, accompanies mum to antenatal classes, the midwife will feel 
baby through mum's tummy and say, oh, oh, this is a, I can feel baby's head. This is and with movements. You can sometimes see baby's knee, baby's elbow. And so the child will get a good idea that baby fills the entire mummy's tummy. So if we use a balloon, if that is signifying the uterus, the womb in which baby grows, in front of it is the urinary bladder, which can be signified by the blue balloon, and behind the uterus is the large bowel, which can be signified by the brown balloon. So the child then has a good idea what is within mum's bony pelvis, the large bowel, brown, the yellow, the uterus, the magic sleeping bag in which baby grows. And in front is the urinary bladder. So if we just put aside the blue balloon, the urinary bladder, the large bowel, the brown balloon, and we take an avocado seed to signify the baby unit. There's a tiny baby inside with, within its swimming pool. And if we then put two fingers into the balloon, So now we have the balloon with the avocado seed inside. So this will signify basically the pregnant uterus with baby growing attached to the upper part of the uterus. This would be the neck and this is the body of the uterus. So as baby grows, this unit expands. We can mimic that by blowing air into the balloon there's a shorter breath here Then if we turn the balloon upside down, the right way up, the avocado seed falls to the base. So here we can say to the child, this is this magic sleeping bag in which baby is growing. And as baby is growing, it expands and stretches much like the elastic balloon, the muscle being elastic. And it and it occupies mum's entire tummy. And this is the narrowed opening called the neck of the womb or cervix. We're going to put a little bit more air into the balloon. During the pregnancy, there are mums will f mummies will feel tightenings. These are called Brixton Hicks contractions. Their actual function, we're not 100% certain, but they can be mimicked by gently pressing the side of the balloon. As you can see, nothing is happening. The length of the neck of the womb, of the length of the balloon is the same. But then if we press the upper part of the balloon, what we can see is that we've got widening. There's widening of the neck of the womb, thinning of the walls of the neck of the womb. And as you can see now, the neck of the womb, the length is much shorter and is becoming part of the rest of the balloon. And during childbirth, the neck of the womb gets taken up into the body of the uterus. And as you can see now, we have some what we call dilatation, which is widening of the neck of the womb. If we keep massaging. And as you can see now, okay. 
I'm just worried it's going to shoot out. Ah, and there we have the baby head first coming out of the uterus after the neck of the womb has actually stretched to allow the back of baby's head which is 10 centimeter diameter what is 10 centimeters well roughly if you have to hand a bird's custard tin that is 9.5 which is virtually 10 centimeter diameter so the next obstacle that baby has to pass is the birth canal and that as you can see is roughly the size of size of a thick clenched fist but the canal isn't straight as this bird's custard tin is it's curved and from baby being curled up into a ball in this confined space baby has to very slowly swivel and spiral and straighten out into something that is very tall and long in order to be able to get out of that 10 centimeter diameter opening so it takes time just much much like a contortionist trying to escape from an Indian jail where there's two parallel sets of steel bars he goes very gradually and slowly so he doesn't injure himself the opening of the lower abdomen the third opening for baby the birth canal is likewise two centimeters which we can roughly say is that opening of the blue elastic band but skin if we give it time will gradually stretch and as you can see this elastic band it will with time gradually stretch to 10 centimeter diameter to allow baby out but it's got to be gradual or it will tear so if we now bring the idea of the bony pelvis um, it looks complicated these are the two parts that we sit on the, called uh, trochanters uh, ischial tuberosities and we can mimic the bony pelvis with a model we have two separate discs on which we sit this is the tibial tuberosities that we sit on and these two openings which are the opening there and there we can mimic with these two so effectively we sit on two wheel two rings and there's a third ring that joins the first two rings together and it's to that that we have the sockets for the ball and hip uh, ball and socket joint of the hip joints and at the back we have the curve the sacrum the, the lumbar spine um, and in women this curve is increased during pregnancy so this ring actually becomes more vertical and that then enables to take some of the weight of baby and swimming pool so here we have basically a model made by a child explaining to the child that complicated looking anatomy of the bony pelvis two rings joined by a third ring to which we have the hip joints attached what else can we say to, to uh, for children if we look at baby this is uh, a doll and as you can see the head is the largest part the shoulders not so large and in a baby the head is the, the largest most advanced part of baby and if you have a look the long diameter is from front to back sideways it's the baby isn't the diameter there is not as large and this diameter from front to back of baby's head is actually at 90 degrees to the widest part of the body the shoulders so baby 
in order to get out of babe mum's tummy goes if we signify my two fingers as the pubic symphysis at the front baby goes underneath the pubic symphysis following the curve of the sacrum as you can see a nice curve there um, but once baby's head has come out you can see that the shoulders are at 90 degrees to the head and we've got to allow baby to turn this is called restitution to go into that narrower part of the bony pelvis so and then the shoulders can come out so baby is born initially chin on chest where the back of baby's head that 10 centimeter diameter opening like a wedge comes through the opening in the bony pelvis and then when the baby's head has passed out underneath the pubic symphysis you'll see baby slowly either turning to mum's left or mum's right and this is called restitution and that is because the shoulders are taking up the front to back position the long transverse diameter of the shoulders becomes front to back and then the baby is born coming out one shoulder and the other shoulder there are clavicles front and back little uh, front right and left clavicles and they're bendy so they you can encourage the first front shoulder to come out from underneath the pubic symphysis and then the back shoulder follows so they're the things to grasp about birth so as we go we've got the hammock from front to back and by stretching its coat during the first birth it then behaves as a trap door allowing baby's head and body to pass and once baby's head and body is passed it closes back because it's elastic much like your biceps it's stretchy muscle is stretchy and that's the beautiful thing about muscle it's elasticity it stretches so from being a hammock it no longer only functions as a hammock it f functions as a trap door opening and closing allowing baby in and out of mum's tummy so what else can we show to children well there are there's great advances in obstetrics here we have a beautiful bottle if this was full of wine up to the neck you had no corkscrew to get the cork out of the bottle you wouldn't want to smash the bottle because then one you damage the bottle and two you could get the glass inside the wine so the challenge how could you remove very gently this stopper out of the bottle without damaging the stopper or the bottle in any way the challenge for the 13 and 14 year old that's doing physics and the clue is friction so without heating the bottle up if you can't get something out then you push it in so we have you can imagine if there was wine up to the neck of the bottle that would be air if we suddenly in one go force the cork in it could compress the air to such an extent that we get flat fracturing of the glass neck then we'll have glass in the wine and then you'll end up accidentally drinking the wine and ending up with glass in the back of your throat and if you can't cough it off you'll have to go to casualty to have it removed so do it gradually over three occasions as you've seen i've done it once count 30 seconds press a little bit more wait another 30 seconds and it's during that time that the decreased volume that uh, the air within the bottleneck uh, uh, has time to actually accommodate that smaller volume so the air molecules will strike the glass wall more frequently losing momentum warming the glass neck and slowing down so they will get used to that smaller volume that they've got to move in and then if you press it again you can press them a little bit more 
Again, the air molecules will strike the glass wall more frequently, warming the glass wall, losing the momentum, and then be able to fit into that decreased volume. Finally, the third time you push, and then you'll end up with the cork, which is now on the bottom of the bottle, actually floating on your wine. But then you can pour the wine out of the bottle, and then you've got the cork in the bottle. But you want the cork out of the bottle. The question, how could you do it? Well, friction, we've said friction. The way we can introduce friction is with a plastic bag. So if we remove the air out of the plastic bag, effectively producing a straw, we can then feed the straw through the glass bottleneck. We've got the open air, open end of the bag, of the upper part of the bottle. If we then turn the bottle upside down, Pour, blow a little bit of air into the, in the bag, hold the air in the bag, and as we then pull the plastic bag past out of the bottle, with the air still in the bag, the air has opened up the upper part of the bag, so that the plastic now plastic bag surrounds the polystyrene cork. And the friction between the wall of the plastic bag and the cork will enable us to keep the air in the bag to remove this cork out of the bottle. And there we have an undamaged, undamaged cork, unmarked, undamaged bottle. And this is the principle of the Odon device. The improvement on forceps that doesn't bruise baby's head. So the cork signifies the baby's head and that's the birth canal. So it's a party trick you can challenge your children with to make birth an appropriate topic to discuss and think about. So please watch part two, Birth Explained for Adults.